Hello! Sega! Yes, who remembers the Mega Drive then? Answer, most people. It was Sega's super popular console, released in late 1990, and was the European version of the Genesis, which was released about a year before in America, and I think originally it was released like a year before that in Japan or something. Anyway, who cares? Let's put Sonic the sweat hog over there, because we are talking about a portable Mega Drive. You see, back in late 1995, Sega decided that people needed to be able to play all their Mega Drive titles on the move, and so shout out the Genesis Nomad. As its name implies, it has no home and keeps on travelling. Oh look, you can see some artwork on my wall reflected in the window. Aren't you lucky people? Yes, here it is in all its bloody great chunky fat glory. Uh, this was released in like late 1995, so it came quite late in. In fact, arguably far too late in, because uh, they'd released the Saturn a few months before, so uh, interest in the old 16-bit stuff was waning, and as a result, they only sold about a million units. Which still sounds like quite a lot to me, but isn't in Sega console terms of the time. It was also only released in America. No Japanese version, no European version, no nothing which is all somewhat surprising. Anyway, let's have a look at the giant chunky bastard itself. It says Sega on it. It's got a battery light that tells you when the battery are low, which is very relevant, as we will discover later. Interestingly, it has all six of the control buttons to maximise compatibility with the old Genesis titles. You've got a half-decent joypad. I felt worse. I felt better, but I felt worse. Uh, mode button, start button, logo, screen, which... Seems slightly small these days for the massive unit, but hey, they were squeezing a whole Mega Drive in here. Sorry, Genesis in here through uh, dark means before the technology was too super. Power button, DC in. Again, very important for reasons we will shortly see. That's where you shove your cartridges in. That is where you could plug it into a television and use it as a conventional Mega Drive, except it's only got one controller port for a second player, so somebody would still have to kind of play with this a bit nicer with an extra controller port, really. But it doesn't have one, so instead we'll look at the headphone socket, the volume, the brightness, and that's about your lot. Until we come to the battery pack. This is actually removable. It's very difficult to get off, but can be removed. And inside, it has, is good god, one, two, three, four, five, six batteries. How wonderful for it. Um, and you'll be pleased to hear that the not as impressive as they are these days batteries of the time would give you about two hours of playing on the move. Not really going to be a massive problem for the Game Boy at the time. You can't fit it in your pocket, doesn't last very long off batteries, blurg. But on the other hand, you can play proper Bow Genesis titles, I suppose. We should probably do that, except the slight difficulty, of course, is all the games that I have are Mega Drive rather than Genesis, but with one exception. Dun 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 dun, Echo the Dolphin. For you see, this being an American one, well, there is region locking involved, that's not a massive problem with Mega Drive titles, it's more to do with the fact that the old American stuff ran 60Hz, the British stuff was 50Hz. Have I got that the wrong way around? No, I don't think I have. And as a result, very few PAL games will actually play on it. Or to put it in a more meaningful sense, my Mega Drive games won't generally play on this. But I do have an American copy of Echo What Is A Dolphin Like. Here he is. He's a dolphin. He's got stars in his head. We love him so much. Quite a good game if I remember this. You are Echo, a powerful young dolphin. You wouldn't see that these days, would you? These days it's all, you are soapy McTavish man. You must shoot brown men. Go! And then next year, do the same again, but slightly more expensive DLC. Um, yeah. I've just remembered how good the cases were for these games, actually. Especially if the, did Sega dropped the ball so massively on the Saturn cases, which couldn't even keep a bloody CD-ROM without getting scratched, whereas these things would survive a nuclear war. Anyway. Mmm. Genesis-tastic. So, I must admit, I've never actually played this cartridge, the simple reason that I don't have a sort of American Genesis, do I? Plug it in, and let's go. Oh my god, I'd forgotten how blue the screen looks, actually. It looks quite blue to my eyes, let alone to uh, yours. And the cartridge isn't working. Hmm. Hmm. Hang on, let's do an ocarina. <sighs> and pretend it's NES days. The, um... Contacts look fine. Don't look, um, corroded or rusty, or in other ways dirty. Hey, there we are. Produced by or under license from Sega. Oh, it isn't doing the shout. Oh, ominous. Oh, look. What's going on? It's all wet and quite blurry. 
I'd forgotten how blurry the screen on this thing was, actually. <laughs> Go, Echo! You dolphin-faced fucker! Go on! Oh, look at all your friends. They're all the same as you, pretty much. But what's going to happen? Oh my god, it's going to be bad. Because obviously there's got to be some sort of problem for you to solve, or it wouldn't be a very interesting game. You're right, we're all very impressed. Have some fish. A little bit of a prog rock beatdown going on there, yeah. Right. Start. God, it's been many years since I've played this game. Whee, whee. I'm just going to take this away from the uh, viewfinder a second to look on this with my bare eyes, because, uh, yeah. The screen's alright, but it suffers quite serious ghosting uh, with movement, which is making it slightly harder to play, because you can't quite see what's coming next, which is a bit of a problem. Oh, that wasn't any good. Go on. Go on, Echo. Do something impressive. No, don't shoot lasers out of your face. That's weird. I think that's supposed to be sonar or something. Woo! There we are. That was it. You could smash things with your nose. Oh, what a beautiful game this was for the time. Oh. These days this would be a PC indie title that you could get on Steam in a sale for £1.72 or something. Whee! Whee! Crazy dolphin fun! Then I remember the game was actually a bit dull for my tastes, but um, it was still very popular. I don't know, your mileage may vary. So yeah, there we are, there's the screen, there's how it works, isn't that all nice? But unfortunately it does bring us back to this problem of, I can't play all the games I like on it. For it's my god. Look how orange everything has gone. Hang on, I'm going to reset the camera. Ah, that's better. The uh, blue screen really messes with the auto contrast on the camera there. Look, Streets of Rage 2, one of the finest games ever etched by man onto cartridge. And I can't play it. It doesn't bloody work in it. Heartbreaking. Oh dear. I just remember what the instruction manuals were like for these things. If, you've, if you're American, you've probably never seen one like this. Basically, you would have, yeah, a tiny bit of writing in English on the far left and then 43 different languages all the way across. And to actually read it, you had to keep flicking through. Isn't that very odd? I don't know why they just didn't do the English bit, then the German bit, then the Italian bit, etc, etc. I don't know. But now, after Echo the Dolphin, we are basically stuck on only two games I have, uh, Mega Drive games, that actually work on it. The first is... Alien 3. Or Alien Cubed, as it appears to say here. Movie tie-in with a bald Sigourney Weaver showing xenomorphs that they die quite easily, it turns out, and the first film wasn't actually true. Let's have a look. Produced by Rondo... Oh, I was reading that. Now I'll never know what it said. <laughs> Tragic. Oh, good old arena. What are you presenting? <gasps> Probe. I remember them doing very good conversions of Mortal Kombat 2 for the Amiga. In fact, I've only played this game before on the Amiga comes thing. I don't think I've ever actually played this cartridge. Weird. Oh look, there's lines. I reckon it's going to spell Alien 3. No, it's just spelling Alien. Right, I was wrong. Let's continue. By which I mean start. Oh god. You need a bib there, mate. You are not looking too healthy. I think we'll just be the bottom ones for this, won't we? Oh, right, so the first one is swap weapon. What we got? Bang bang machine gun. We've got flamethrower. Some sort of grenade or pipe bomb type thing with quite a delayed uh, launch. And lobo grenades, right? We'll go into the old pulse rifle. Oh, there's oh god, bloody hell! Didn't have much time to react to that bugger. Oh god, I'm pressing the switch button. That's not helping. Uh, there we are. Eh, yeah, screw you, bloody aliens. Incidentally, uh, HR Giga, the chap who uh, designed all the aliens, died earlier this year, which is very sad. The weirdest thing is that I always thought his name was pronounced Geiger and didn't find out until he was dead. It was Giga. Right, I'm having a problem here. I can't seem to detect that the aliens are coming early and actually have enough time to shoot them. I don't remember that being a problem on the Amiga version. Maybe it's this blurry screen. Mm. It sort of uh, makes everything feel a bit delayed. Oh, hang on. I've just remembered you had a really funny jump animation where it looked like she was doing a solo on an air guitar or something. That's a guitar noise, in case you're wondering. Um, this is bloody hard to play through a viewfinder, you know. Oh, I'm being hit. Damn you all. And now I can't shoot because I've run out of ammo. Hang on. Oh, that's alright, I'm dead now. Well, that saved the world from the alien evilness, hasn't it? Bloody wars. I tell you what, I'm actually going to have a quick try on this without looking at the viewfinder. I'll be back in a second. 
Yeah, I'm still having trouble actually spotting the aliens in time to shoot them, even using the little uh, scanner thing in the top right-hand corner, which has inexplicably just disappeared. Anyway, I did want to show you this, one of the favourite things I remember from this game. People who are stuck to the walls by the aliens dance around going, icky, 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 which always amused me immensely. Go on, free him. Good work, Ripley. Oh, he's evaporated. Shame. The wall has beaten us! Right, that's enough Alien 3. I seem to remember that not being the greatest of games on Amiga, and it appears to be exactly the same on Mega Drive, except possibly considerably more difficult. Oh god, everything's gone orange again. But don't worry, everyone! We've got one of the finer... Oh, who am I kidding? The only other game that works on it is Bloody Wrestle War, which isn't a bad game, but it's a remarkably basic wrestling game. Still quite good fun, but it's one of those sort of games which just was a stopgap until better ones came along later. Go on. Rrr, wrestle it up. You couldn't even choose your wrestler, if I remember. But I tell you what we can do, as we've got two players going on here. I can use my amazing Turbo Touch 360 pad. Anybody in the audience who has seen one of these will now be going, Rrr. I tell you what, I'll reset the camcorder so you can see what bloody colour it is, shall I? Look, it's this colour. It's black and yellow, like a wasp or a bee or somebody who supports a sports team that happens to use those exact colours. Yes, the problem with the Turbo Touch 360 is that it's the most ridiculous thing ever designed by human brains. Seriously, right? This is the pad. It's all flat. And the idea is, it works to touch rather than you having to actually push something. The problem there, of course, is that you get virtually zero tactile feedback and don't really know where you're putting your thumb because that's actually quite a big hole. And frankly, it's bloody ridiculous. I have no idea why they thought this was a good idea or indeed why the flipping hell I've got one. But there we go. You've got three slightly soft buttons and a joypad that makes you want to die when you use it. I do wonder if there's like a specific game this is really good for because it's like you can do that quicker than you can a joypad or something. I don't know. Don't particularly care. But on one plus side for them, the lead is incredibly long, so at least they haven't stiffed us on that. Right, two-player joy for Wrestle War. I've just realised, how can I hold this up and use the joypad at the same time? Hmm, this is going to prove interesting. On with you. Produced by under licence from Sega Enterprises Limited. Thank you. Sega. Wrestle War. Wasn't there actually an official wrestling thing called Wrestle War about this time? I don't think I don't think this is actually licensed to anything. It's got just sort of fictional men doing fictional moves in a fictional arena, fictionally. Right, two player, please, Bob. And oh, player two gets to choose Mohawk Kid, Bran, Grand Kong, no. Buckskin Rogers. Where's the one that looks like Hulk Hogan? There's always one. Here he is, Titan Morgan. That'll do nicely. Why? Thank you. That's very polite of you to say. Right, so you can wander. You can punch, you can kick. Luckily, high kick for a wrestler there. It's all the usual sorts of things you, one would expect. Ooh, look out. There's some sort of stuff going on. Aha! Oh, good God! I forgot that. You get a really uh, confusing camera angle change. Right, let's have a quick go on the old turbo touch here. Um, yeah, well, it works. I mean, you know, you can move diagonally and things, and it's kind of... Well, hang on, which one's diagonal again? Bloody hell, you have to basically keep your eye on it to know what you're doing. This is... A, it's actually slightly worse than I remember it being. That is saying something. Right. Punchy, punchy. Missy, missy. Oh, something's happening. And, oh, it's been a bit of wrestling. There's actually very few wrestling moves actually going on in these games. I've forgotten to turn my phone off. Bloody hell, this is going well, isn't it? number withheld, like I'm gonna answer that. So yes, that was the Sega Nomad. It's a big chunky thing that fits in your hands and lets you play your, I was gonna say Mega Drive, no, Genesis games on the move, but not for very long. I think at the time this would have been a pretty impressive piece of kit. I mean, the screen is one of those slightly annoying ghosty ones, but it's not bad for the time. 
Uh, it's one of those things, if you did manage to get hold of one, you would probably have been king of the playground for a day until something new came along. Um, yeah, but as we say, it didn't do very well, really. It came too late, I think, quite simply. The pricing at release seemed quite good, though. It was about $180, which, uh, compared to the fact that the Saturn had launched earlier that year for 400 was pretty nice. Although, of course, the I think the PlayStation was 300 wasn't it? Because it massively undercut the Saturn, which was the beginning of big problems for Mr. Sega. So, in conclusion, it's a bit of a house brick with a small screen in it that weighs several tons, doesn't last long and turned up too late, but it's still a pretty nice thing, and hey, it's probably the only way for many years you could play Genesis games on the move. This thing, however, is just fucking rubbish. Subscribe for more.